to this new episode of Write Your World. My name is Peter Adejo, facilitator together with Remnant TV. It's always good to know that you are behind the screen learning new things each and every day. And we are really hoping that um, this project helps you advance your writing. Now, um, I want to first of all welcome you back from all all the content that we've covered so far and i hope you are understanding what um we are trying to deliver to you now i want us to begin from a little bit of an input to your writing and what should you consider when you are writing that's a very good thought and i want to give you a few tips just in less than a minute when you have to consider your audience do you all your readers do, the readers are very important and you have to always put them at the front of your mind okay so when you consider about readers their age okay the years then you have to also know their status if you want to write books to be read by the rich well that's good if you want to write books to be read by um you know the not so well off you know it's all up to you but also you have to talk about or think about the level of education the level of education if for example you want to write for a nursery child it will determine the kind of language that you're going to use if you want to write for um, a member of parliament still you have to use a particular set of language and then um, the resources that you're going to use uh, the mode of delivery, the genre that you want to really communicate best. You know, some genres could communicate ideas, particular ideas better than other genres, okay? So if you want to have a political view about life and maybe you want to put it out there, you would want to put it in um, a, a poem or in a novel or in a play other than a fantasy okay other than a fantasy because people relate more to these um novels plays and poetic uh, pieces more than we relate to fantasy because it's a world that is extremely imaginative okay so yes all right so for now i want us to dwell into the story structure the pattern and the theme or idea we've got wills okay let's start off with the structure of the story um in easy and simple terms my we are having a um, discussion with my producer who said well it is easier to understand it in the language of beginning middle and end and i agree with him somehow somehow i agree with him before he starts you know um <laughs> but yeah before i get fired so i have to agree with him somehow but um there is more yes the story or the book or whatever you're writing should have a beginning yes it should have a middle true it should have an end but there is more to that like i said in the previous episode that come about that area okay what is involved in the beginning we are going to see this briefly what then in the middle and how should the end be okay for you to be an epic i want us to be epic writers not just writers video writers no 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 no. we are airing this just that you become an epic writer okay so okay yes there is the beginning the middle and the end but what is the structure of a story first of all you have to know that is what we call a plot and a plot line or what you had so much people call the storyline okay it's the structure upon which a story runs and um how it also unveils the way the plot unveils to the readers if we're reading your work we really want to follow your structure of the story okay so um what do you consider you must have questions that your text is answering for example in harry potter we run on the question will Harry Potter, okay, with his teammates, really eventually and finally defeat you know who, you know, Lord Voldemort? That's a question. And in the end, we get the answer. When we go to Lord of the Rings, we have that central question Will um, Frodo be able to destroy the ring? But you could notice that before the final parts, a lot goes on. So some point we even lose out also where is the middle, where is, 
you know it's because people have become so good at writing that you you feel like everything is a single piece okay so that's what we want you to do however when you look at things like animal farm there are very many questions there are very many questions that we answer that we we ought to find the answers to in the book just like uh oliver twist you know oliver twist will the boy finally get his true identity or not will the corrupt officials pay for being corrupt will they be arrested and all those things will the situation of the poor really get better and all those things there are very many questions that will bring us to theme okay and ideas a theme is that central idea that you're presenting through your writing and we're calling it central or uh, let's call it even general that it should be expressed universal wise you know we have themes of love themes of suffering corruption um plight of children plight of women you know um so it depends on what you want to address but a theme should be understood you know universally how we understand love could be a little bit different but other people also understand love that's why we call it a universal um kind of idea an idea you could build an idea that is independent just to you for example you could talk about upe schools and you want to create the idea of its effectiveness now in the us they don't have upe okay probably have something else but for you that's the idea that you have in your writing so it's not that universal but you can always borrow up to that okay so uh, the structure i was talking about the complexities that come in in between the beginning middle and end as we wrap this up so there's no um, we have the exposition which is basically where you introduce you introduce the characters the setting whatever you want the book to run with that's where we should find it a brief introduction then we have the rising action where then the problem or the primary concept of a conflict is introduced that is the rising action then we have the climax like in a song you know when a choir is singing there is that part where they really come out too strongly it's not the end by the way the climax unlike my producer who says it's for him it's the same no it's not i hope i'm not getting fired you the climax fired. the climax is never the end so um it's just where there is highest tension in the story and then we have the falling action now this is, this could be like the end of the story where things get revealed secrets are revealed then explanations are given you know and there is a lot of calmness that comes along and yeah we can call it the conclusion so um you should always remember how you want to structure your your story could be about you could use flashbacks you could have linear you could have um circular kind of structure you could have parallel it's all up to you but my favorite is the circular where in which the story always ends up where it started from so thank you so much for watching thank you for keeping it real thank you for writing your world i am peter please do not forget to subscribe click on the bell for all the notifications say it with me writers bye